on everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Now I hope wherever you are in the world that you and your loved ones are doing fine in these quite unusual times. But to take your mind off what's going on, we have a lovely little keepsake box for you here. So this is the latest project. I've made it out of the wall and off cuts that I had from my shadow lamp build and I added some dovetail mitre splines. Made them from maple and we have some spalted beach for the top and for the bottom, that was the beach that I rescued from the river. I planked it up, dried it out, and we got a lovely decorative top on it. And so it's a really nice box with a nice snug fit. So you'll see all that in the video, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy it. Now there's not much talking in this one, it's just me showing how everything is done, and uh, most of these techniques you would have seen me use before, apart from the dovetail mitre splines. I do go into a little bit of explanation on those. Made a nice simple jig out of plywood, takes five minutes to put this together, I'll show you how to do that. And uh, yeah, they look really, really nice, really, really decorative, and it's very, very simple to do. So, without further ado, let's rock on and build a lovely walnut keepsake box. Okay, I've been quite up to this part in the build because you've seen me do most of that stuff before, but this stuff is a little bit different. So I've made a jig. This is for doing the dovetail mitre splines. So it's essentially just a flat board with a flat straight edge bottom. I marked the center of it. And then from the center point, I drew a line at 45 degrees either side of center, which makes these two boards 90 degrees. Then my box will sit in here just like that. This flat piece will go against the fence of the router table and the dovetail cutter will cut straight through here. So I'm going to do three on each corner and uh, you'll see it working and in operation and then we can use the same dovetail cutter to make the dovetail splines themselves. So yeah, it's just a simple jig. The box will sit in it like that and we'll run this over our router. I'll show you it all working now in a second, let's do it. Okay, we're all set up in the jig and it's very simple. As you can see, it just holds the box at a 45 degree angle to the table. Uh, there's the dovetail bit sticking up, so the flat part goes against the fence, and I just run that straight through like that, and that will cut my um, dovetail mitre spline straight through my 45 degree angle, or my 90 degree corner at a 45 degree angle, if that makes sense. So, it'll be slow enough, I'll have to run it through, flip the box, clamp it, flip the box, clamp it, flip the box, clamp it, that kind of thing. But that's how it works, it's nice and simple. 
So uh, yeah, I'll cut the first one now. Fingers crossed that this is going to work. And then we will make the mitre splines. Now, we will not adjust the height of the dovetail cutter. It will remain at that height for all our spline cuts. And then to make our splines themselves, we will be making with the same cutter and at the exact same height. So do not change that. That's the trick to doing this. But uh, yeah, let's crack on now and see. Hopefully this will work. Okay, there we go. One perfectly cut mitre spline, dovetail mitre spline. So you can see how it works now. So we're going to do the rest of them exactly like that. And when they're all done, I'll give you a look at it. Okay, there's a close up of our mitre splines. And here is the piece that we've made. So we just ran this through the router again, either side. And you just keep moving the fence over, just taking a little nip at a time, just until you get the exact um, right size. It's nice and simple, just keep tapping the fence until it's an exact fit. And that just slots in there like that. So we can cut all these now to the right size, glue them all in place, and then we can flush cut them off afterwards. Okay guys, this is where we're at. We have all the dovetail mitre splines in place. I've planed them all down and then gave the box a light sand. I've used some rough pieces of offcuts of um, walnuts. So there's a few little things like knots here that I have to patch up. I had a bit of tear out up here. You can see this is breaking off, so we have to deal with that. So I might put a chamfer around the lid just to take out this piece here because I don't think it's gonna glue too well. So I have a little bit of filling to do on the knot. I have another knot over here with a small hole I need to do a bit of filling on. But other than that, it's pretty good. So now, what I want to do is bandsaw off the top of this box. And this is the part that I've been dreading because my bandsaw doesn't cut exactly straight. So I'm going to set everything up and do this. Um, yeah, this is the bit I've been dreading. So I'm going to cut it off just below this dovetail here. Straight, hopefully, the whole way around. So I'm going to spend a bit of time now setting up the bandsaw as absolute to the best I can. And we'll see if we can chop the lid off this. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, we're all set up. Everything is square, tested, retested and rechecked. So if this doesn't work, <laughs> it's bye bye project. Okay, that didn't actually turn out too bad. Um, it's not perfect, but I can get some jointable edges on this now. So I'm gonna take the jack plane now and uh, flatten these and try and joint this box together. Okay, after doing a bit of planing, 
we have a pretty good joint all the way around. It's not perfect, but I'm getting a lot of splintering on the walnut for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty good joint all the way around. I don't want to take any more now because after flattening it out, I've changed the gap between the miter splines slightly. So that's after narrowing a small bit, which I knew was going to happen anyway, because you'd lose the curve for the blade. And then for your flattening adjustment, that was going to narrow a small bit more. But uh, yeah, it still looks, looks pretty good, I think. So let's soldier on. I have a few little repairs to do now, so I'll get busy doing that, get a sand up, and uh, I need to make the inside now of the box that holds on the lid. Right, there we go. One keepsake box with dovetail motor splines, spotted beach top, maple insides. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. It helps YouTube know to share the video with other people. If you guys want to share this video too, that's one way you can help this channel out and help it grow. That would be much appreciated. So comments and questions below. Anything you feel I've left out, anything you want to know. If you want me to go into something in more detail, just let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you. 
So yeah, there we go guys, one walnut keepsake box. And again, I hope wherever you are in the world that you're doing fine and that your loved ones are fine too. And uh, we'll get through this, we'll soldier on. So yeah, on to the next project. Take it easy guys.